So in this time, uh, we are going to examine a patient uh, with varicose vein. Again, a very common uh, short case in final MBBS examination, right? So in uh, varicose vein examination, we have a few steps to do. Uh, first of all, we have to take the patient. It is very important to take the patient into the standing position. So in the standing position, we have to do the basic inspection part in front and turn the patient and then uh, inspect the back of the patients, uh, the, whatever the affected globally. And then we have to take the patient back into the bed uh, to do the rest of the inspection and palpation part. And for the final steps, then again after for the tourniquet test, we have to take the patient back into the standing position. So during this examination, keep in mind, we have to start the examination in standing position and midway we have to put the patient back into the bed. And then finally, for the tourniquet test, we have to take the patient from the bed into the standing position again. Okay, now we'll know how to do the examination in a very close vein patient at the first part when the patient is in standing position. Right. Now, uh, you have to take the patient like this into the standing position, right? So, in the standing position, I can see on examination of the left and the right lower limbs. The left lower limb, the below knee region as well as in the above knee region, I can see dilated tortuous veins. And as well as I can see a uh, ulcer there over the medial malleolar region. But comparing with the right lower limb, I can't see any uh, obvious dilated tortuous veins in involving in the greater saphenous territory in the right lower limb. Now I want to turn the patient back. Turn the patient back and see. Now you can see in the left left lower limb, the lesser saphenous territory is minimally affected. I can't see any dilated tortuous veins over there. And in the but in the right lower limb, some dilated tortuous veins are there in the lesser saphenous territory. So now you can uh, now you can see here uh, comparing the uh, both lower limbs, dilated tortuous veins are there in the greater saphenous territory in the left lower limb. Most of them are below knee reach at the below knee. And then uh, there is a uh, active ulcer is there over the medial malleolus, and some you can see some reticular veins over there, some dilated uh, uh, veins over there. But and uh, but I still I can't see uh, discoloration, skin discoloration like uh, lipodermatosclerosis like changes are still not there here. And uh, there is a hypopigmented patch, and we uh, got information from the patient. This is not a healed ulcer. Suggestive of atrophy or blanket. This is not a healed ulcer. Uh, this is just a depigmentated patch, uh, which was uh, which was there uh, from the uh, uh, for a long time. And this is not a healed ulcer. So don't confuse with that, right? And then, so now we have to move to see what about the above knee region, right? In the above knee also, you can see the greater saphenous vein has dilated. Greater saphenous vein has dilated. You can see the nicely dilated vein uh, over there at the thigh region at the medial aspect of the thigh. So it implies that the patient is having a greater saphenous territory abnormality. Right. So then uh, for the rest of the examination, I would like to see, right, I would like to palpate the patient's uh, saphenofemoral junction for any saphenovirics or whether I can palpate thrill over there. For that, I could palpate the pubic tubercle, two finger beds lateral and two finger beds below, right over there, over there. I can't see any obvious uh, bulging over there. At the same time, I can't palpate obvious bulging over there. At the same time, I have a little bit of a little So when the patient is coughing, I can't palpate a thrill over there also. So it is not suggestive of a saphenovirix. At the same time, even without a thrill, you can have a, a significant uh, saphenofemoral uh, incompetence, but I couldn't feel a thrill there 
uh, when I'm palpating or the saponofemoral junction. And, and the second step, we have to take the patient back into the supine position uh, to do the second part of the examination. But in the supine position now, we can see, we have to, now we initially we saw that there were some venous bulge outs over there at the medial aspect of the leg. Right. Now, we are going to elevate the leg. We are going to elevate the leg and then when you are elevating the leg, you can see all the dilated tortuous veins are very nicely empty. Very nicely empty. So you can even uh, apply some pressure over there at the medial aspect. So you can see the, all the so the dilated tortuous veins got collapsed when the patient is elevating the lower limb. So it is a specific, very specific sign of a venous abnormality because if it is venous in origin, it should empty when you elevate the lower limb. Right. And then you can palpate the medial aspect of the patient's uh, uh, lower limb below the region. And here even I can palpate a defect in the deep fascia, most probably the incompetent perforator site. So here also I can palpate a defect over the deep fascia. Again, it's a possibility of a, a perforator site. But here I can't palpate any defects over there. After applying, after uh, after doing like this, after emptying the limb, uh, I can do the tourniquet test. But before that, I would like to see the patient's distal pulses as well as the ankle mobility. Right. Here, uh, I have to palpate for the dorsalis pedis. Okay, I can well palpate the bilateral dorsalis pedis pulses in this patient as well as posterior tibial pulses. Yes, the posterior tibial pulses are also palpable. Right. And then about the ankle mobility, you can compare it with the uh, normal limb. Normal limb. Right. Here the ankle mobility seems to be normal. So one can raise a question, why this ankle mobility and the distal uh, arterial pulses in a patient with very close limb? Because if your ankle movements are restricted due to osteoarthritis of the ankle joint or a like condition, your muscle pump is not working, in the calf pump is not working properly. So that can give rise to inadequate emptying of the deep vein, which can be a reason for varicose veins. So it is very important to know whether the ankle movements in normal ranges they are or not. And then why distal pulses? Distal pulses because most of the patients or not each and every patient will be offered a very close vein surgery or even sometimes after the surgery we are going to apply a compression bandage to the affected limb. So if the patient is having a peripheral arterial disease or so occlusive arterial disease at the same time at the for that type of patient if you are going to apply a compression bandage so it will be a disaster because it's going to worsen the ischemia. So it is very important to know whether the distal circulation is adequate or not before you uh, before you plan a, a treatment for this type of patient. So in short case, keep in mind it is very important to know very very important to assess the distal circulation, distal pulses, dorsal speed is posterior tibial, and to check the ankle movement. Right. Now I am going to move towards the tourniquet test. Okay. What is tourniquet test? So during tourniquet test, what we are going to do is, we are here we are doing one level tourniquet test. We are going to apply the tourniquet above knee, close to the saponofemoral junction. So to identify the pathology. To identify the pathology. So the reason behind the varicose vein, whether it is due to the saponofemoral incompetence or whether it is due to perforator incompetence. Roughly we can differentiate uh, those two uh, etiologies for the very close vein by doing tourniquet test. Right. So when you are doing tourniquet test in the exams also, you have to be, uh, you, have to, you have to place the patient uh, in a way that when you are taking the patient back from the bed, uh, you have to not to cross 
no, not to cross the patient by your hand, right? So you can understand it by, uh, uh, I will demonstrate to you how to do that part, right? First of all, you have to elevate the patient's leg. First of all, you have to elevate the patient's leg and then empty all the dilated torsos veins. Empty all the dilated torsos veins and you can use a Foley catheter, right? You can use a Foley catheter or sometimes you can use a, uh, some sort of a tourniquet for that. Then, after emptying completely, you can apply the tourniquet like that. Right. Then, so you can then you can ask the patient to put the leg down, but you have to maintain the pressure here. Right. Then, I'm going to make that thing and then behind the back of the pallet. Right. Then, now you can see under a couple of minutes here. Now you can see I'm applying I'm applying the tourniquet over there. But still the dilated torsos veins are not appeared actually. Still they have not appeared, right? But some part of it is there. Now I'm going to release my tourniquet. Now you can see after immediately I release my tourniquet, the engorgement become more obvious the engorgement become more obvious so it implies that the pathology for this dilated torsos vein so varicose vein the etiology is saponofemoral incompetence rather than perforated incompetence when i was applying pressure over there it's still some bulges there so some contribution may be there from the uh, perforators but the most of the contribution from the greater saphenous vein reflux so for this patient the diagnosis is the patient is having left side left lower limb varicose vein due to saponofemoral incompetence and it is complicated with the active venous ulcer over the medial malleolus region right